Hi, and welcome to Bible Buddy. And today we are reading for day number 127. And we are reading from the first book of Samuel. Um, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the reading of your word. Best we all here at this day. Father, I ask that you enrich the faith of my brothers and sisters throughout the world. And I pray that you open their hearts to you, Father. And um, all the word that we're reading, everything that we're reading, I ask that you help us keep it in our hearts. And use it in our daily lives. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Okay, so let's read. 1 Samuel chapter 18 And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And Saul took him that day, and would let him go no more home to his father's house. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant, because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself with a robe that was upon him, and gave it to David and his garments, and even to his sword, and to his bow, and to his girdle. And David went out whithersoever Saul sent him, and behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war, and he was accepted in the sight of all the people, and also in the sight of Saul's servants. And it came to pass, as they came, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, that the women came out of the cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul, with tabrets, with joy, and with instruments of music. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul hath slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. And Saul was very wroth, and the saying displeased him, and he said, they have ascribed unto David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? And saw I David from that day and forward. And it came to pass on the, on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul, and he prophesied in the midst of the house. And David played with his hand as at other times. And there was a javelin in Saul's hand. And Saul cast the javelin, for he said, I will smite David, even to the wall with it, and David avoided out of his presence twice. And Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. Therefore Saul removed him from him and made him captain over a thousand. And he went out and came in before the people. And David behaved himself wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. Wherefore when Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, he was very afraid of him. But all Israel and Judah loved David, because he went out and came in before them. And Saul said to David, Behold, my elder daughter Merab, her I will give thee to wife. Only be thou valiant to me, and fight the Lord's battles. For Saul said, Let not mine hand be upon him, but let the hand of the Philistines be upon him. And David said unto Saul, Who am I, and what is my life, or my father's family in Israel? that I should be the son-in-law to a king. But it came to pass at the time when Merab, Saul's daughter, should have been given to David, and she was given unto Adriel, the Maholathite to wife. And Mishael, Saul's daughter, loved David, and they told Saul, and the thing pleased him. And Saul said, I'll give him her, and that she may a snare to him, and that the hand of the Philistines may be against him. Wherefore Saul said to David, Thou shalt this day be my son-in-law in the one of the twain. And Saul commanded his servants, saying, Commune with David secretly, and say, Behold, the king hath delight in thee, and all his servants love thee. Now therefore be the king's son-in-law. And Saul's servants spake the, those words in the ears of David. And David said, Seem it to you, it to you a light? Thing to be a king's son-in-law, seeing that I am a poor man and lightly esteemed. And the servants of Saul told him, saying, On this manner spake David. And Saul said, Thus shall ye say to David, The king desired not any dowry, but an hundred foreskins of the Philistines, to be avenged of the king's enemies. But Saul 
thought to make David fall by the hand of the Philistines. And when his servants told David these words, it pleased David well to be the king's son-in-law, and the days were not expired. Wherefore David arose and went, he and his men, and slew the Philistines two hundred men. And David brought their foreskins, and they gave him, and they gave them in full table tail to the king, and he might be the king's son-in-law. And Saul gave him Mishael his daughter to wife. And Saul saw that he knew the Lord was with David, and that Mishael Saul's daughter loved him. And Saul was yet more afraid of David, and Saul became David's enemy continually. Then the princes of the Philistines went forth, and it came to pass after they went forth that David behaved himself more wisely than all the servants of Saul, so that his name was much set by. And Saul spake to Jonathan his son and to all his servants that they should kill David. But Jonathan, David's son, delighted much in David. And Jonathan told David, saying, Saul, my father, seek it to kill thee. Now, therefore, I pray thee, take heed to thyself into the morning, and abide in a secret place, and hide thyself. And I will go out and stand beside my father in the field, for thou art, and I will commune with my father of thee. And what I see, I will tell thee. And Jonathan spake good of David unto Saul, his father, and said unto him, Let not the king sin against his servant, against David, because he hath not sinned against thee. And because his works have been to thee work very good. For he did put his life in his hands, and he slew the Philistines. And the Lord brought a great salvation for all the Israel. Thou sawest it, and this rejoice. Wherefore, when wilt thou sin against innocent blood, to slay David's without a cause? And Saul hearkened unto the voice of Jonathan, and Saul swore, And the Lord liveth, he shall not be slain. And Jonathan called David, and Jonathan showed him all these things. And Jonathan brought, brought David to Saul, and he was in his presence as in times past. And there was a war again, and David went out and fought with the Philistines, and slew them with a great slaughter, and they fled from him. And the evil spirit from the Lord was upon Saul, as he sat in his house with his javelin in his hand, and David played with his hand. And Saul sought to smite David, even into the wall with the javelin. But he slipped away out of Saul's presence, and he smote the javelin into the wall. And David fled and escaped that night. Saul, Saul also sent messengers into David's house to watch him and to slay him in the morning. And Mitchell, David's wife, told him, saying, If thou save not thy life tonight, tomorrow thou shalt be slain. So Mitchell let David down through the window, and he went and fled and escaped. And Mitchell took an image and laid it on the bed, and put out a pillow of goat's hair for his bolster, and covered it with a cloth. And when Saul sent messengers to take David, she said, He is sick. And Saul sent the messengers again to see David, saying, Bring him up to me in the bed, and that I may slay him. And when the messengers were come in, and behold, there was an image in bed with a pillow of goat's hair for his bolster. And Saul said unto Mishael, Why hast thou deceived me so? And sent away mine enemy, for he is escaped. And Mishael said, answered Saul. He said unto me, Let me go. Why should I kill thee? So David fled and escaped, and came to Samuel to Ramah, and told him that Saul had done to him. And he said, And he and Samuel went and dwelt in Naioth. And it was told Saul, saying, Behold, David is at Naioth in Ramah. And Saul sent messengers to take David, and when they saw the company of the prophets prophesy, sighing, and Samuel standing as appointed over them, the Spirit of God was upon the messengers of Saul, and they also prophesied. And it was told Saul, he sent the other messengers, and they prophesied likewise. And Saul sent messengers again the third time, and they prophesied also. And they went also into Ramah, and came to a great well, that is in Sheku. And he asked and said, Where are Samuel and David? And one said, Behold, they be at the Naioth in Ramah. So he went thither to Naioth in Ramah. And the Spirit of God was upon him also. And he went on and prophesied and until he came to Naioth in Ramah. And he stripped off his clothes also and prophesied before Samuel in like manner and lay down naked all that day and all that night. Wherefore they say, is Saul also among the prophets? Let's go to Psalm number 102. 
Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let me cry, summon to Thee. Hide not Thy face from Thee in the day that I am in trouble. Incline Thine ear unto me, in the day when I call, answer me speedily. For my days are consumed like smoke, and my bones are burned as a heart. My heart is smitten and withered like grass, so that I forget to eat my bread. By reason of the voice of my groaning, my bones cleave to my skin. I am like a pelican of the wilderness. I am like an owl of the desert. I watch, and am as a sparrow alone upon the housetop. My enemies reproach me all the day, and they are mad against me, or sworn against me, for I have eaten ashes like bread and mingled my drink with weeping, because of thine indignation of thy wrath. For thou hast lifted me up and cast me down. My days are like shadow that declineth, and I am withered like grass. But thou, O Lord, shalt endure for ever, and thy remembrance unto all generations. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion, for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. For thy servants take pleasure in her stones and favor the dust thereof. So the heathen shall feel the name of the Lord, and all the kings of the earth thy glory. And when the Lord shall build up Zion. He shall appear in his glory. He will regard prayers of the destitute and not despise their prayer. This shall be the written. This shall be written for the generation to come, and for the people that shall be ex- created shall praise the Lord, for he hath looked down from the height of his sanctuary. From heaven did the Lord behold the earth, to hear the groaning of the prisoner, to loose those that are appointed to death, to declare the name of the Lord in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem. When the people are gathered together. In the kingdoms to serve the Lord, He weakened my strength in the day, in the way, He shortened my days. I said, "O oh my God, take me not away in the midst of my days. Thy years are throughout all generations. Of old hast Thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of Thy hands. They shall perish, perish, but Thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment, as a vesture shalt Thou exchange them." And they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years shall have no end. The children of thy servants shall continue, and their seed shall be established before thee. There we go. I thank you so much for reading along with me, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. God bless.